Now that we've got an understanding of implicit differentiation, we can actually use this method of differentiating to find derivatives of functions that we may not have known how to deal with before. So something like natural log of x, we can actually find the derivative using implicit differentiation. So if I want to take the derivative of y equals natural log of x, this is something I don't know how to yet take the derivative of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this equation in its exponential form. So remember that every logarithmic equation has an equivalent exponential equation. So I can rewrite, rewrite this as an exponential equation. It would look like e to the y power equals x if I rewrite that using its exponential form. So okay, I've, I've rewritten it in, in its exponential form, but I have not yet taken the derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take the derivative of this whole equation. When I take the derivative of e to the y, here's where I'm going to have to use my implicit differentiation, remembering that y is a function of x, so I'm really using the chain rule. So the derivative of e to the y, well, that's just e to the y, times the derivative of that inside part of my function times the derivative of y, let's just call that y prime for right now, equals taking the derivative of x, this part should be a little bit easier, derivative of x will just be one. So okay, what, let's think about what we're trying to do. We're trying to find the derivative of y equals natural log of x. So in other words, I'm trying to find y prime. I'm just trying to find y prime. So let's just see if we can't solve this equation for y prime. So I'll divide both sides by e to the y, and that'll leave me with y prime equals one over e to the y. But now I have y prime in terms of y, which is not particularly helpful. I want something that's in terms of x, right? We started with something that was in terms of x. So I'm going to go ahead and take out this y right here, and in its place I'm going to plug in natural log of x. Oops. So let's do that. So one over e to the natural log of x power. Again, just taking this equation right here and plugging that in. And then I notice I say, hey, e and natural log, remember those are inverse operations. They will sort of undo each other. So all that I'm left with at the end of this is one over x. This is my y prime. So let's just say that this is equal to y prime. So this is what the derivative of natural log of x looks like. So if I want to talk about the derivative of the natural logarithm, we have a, a few different cases that we can talk about here, but they're all relatively similar. So if we're dealing with y equals natural log of x, the derivative y prime is one over x. This is one of those ones that I would suggest having memorized kind of like the derivative of e to the x, derivative of sine of x, cosine of x, all of those. Um, so that's just one you've got to know. Here this part says for x greater than zero, this is just the domain of your derivative. And this is only because the domain of y equals natural log of x has a domain of x greater than zero. So I wouldn't worry too much about the domain right there. That's just kind of um, explicitly stating something that we probably already knew just without even thinking about it. If we're working with y equals natural log of absolute value of x, the derivative doesn't really change. It's still just one over x. This time my domain for x not equal to zero. And again, that's just because the domain of my original function, y equals natural log of absolute value of x has a domain of x not equal to zero. Um, and then finally, if we're working with a y equals natural log of absolute value of u of x, so here we're just saying u is some function, so here we might be using the chain rule, then the shortcut for that will be y prime equals u prime of x divided by u of x. And just to show this real quick, because why not, we can actually show that this is the case. If we're working with a function, pretend this is y equals natural log of u for a moment. When we take the derivative of this function, we would say, okay, take the derivative of natural log of u, so y prime, that's gonna look like one over x, 
but instead of x, I have 1 over u. But then I have this chain rule. I'm thinking about u as a function of x. So here I just need to multiply by u prime. So I have 1 over u times u prime. And then after that, we're just rewriting that as a single fraction just to make it look nice. So that is that derivative rule. Again, it's just coming from the derivative of natural log of x, which we were able to show up above. So let's look at a few examples of this. First up, I've got y equals natural log of 3x. So you can use this derivative rule. I think this one is, is relatively straightforward enough that you don't necessarily need to show any work. But if you're unsure about this, maybe you want to fall back on your general chain rule. We can absolutely do that. If you need to, maybe off to the side, I'm going to say u is equal to whatever that inside part of my function is. Here it's whatever's inside of that natural logarithm. u is equal to 3x. u prime, that is simply going to be 3. So if I rewrite this expression, I have y equals natural log of u. When I take my derivative, I'll have 1 over u times u prime, or more simply, u prime over u. And then y prime, let's take our u and our u prime. We'll plug that back into our derivative. So y prime equals 3 divided by 3x. We can cancel the 3s. We're left with, hey, 1 over x again. So there is our derivative. If you're feeling comfortable with some of these derivative rules or if you want to use the shortcut, I would probably recommend using this method here on at least the first few problems that you do. But I think once you get used to these problems, we hopefully are starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with the chain rule. You, I think, can kind of fall back on this derivative formula right here. It, 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 just kind of speeds up the process a little bit. So if I'm working with y equals natural log of 3x, you just need to recognize that this inside part right here, that 3x, is your u. So y prime, derivative of my inside part, 3x, will just be 3 divided by that same u, that same function, right? So here's u, u also appears in the denominator of my function. So 3 divided by 3x, and then again, of course, we can simplify that to be 1 over x. So we'll get the same solution either way. Obviously, this way is, is a little bit quicker, but I do think it's worth it to take your time with the first few problems um, and just get used to using that chain rule just so that we can kind of see where it comes from um, because I think that's really going to help your understanding of the derivative of natural log of x. Let's look at a few more here. Next up, I have y equals x squared times natural log of x. And again, if, if you're unsure about what derivative rule to use, read this out loud to yourself. This says y equals x squared times natural log of x. I'm multiplying these two functions. So this is going to be a product rule. And actually, let's go back and just label the this previous example, this was a chain rule, just in case you want to look back and decide what rule we're using. But here we're using a product rule. So you can call this guy f, you can call this part g, um, and then take the derivative using your product rule. So let's just hop right in. I think this one's relatively straightforward. y prime. So I'm going to start by taking the derivative of x squared. So the derivative of x squared, that is 2x, times I'll leave natural log of x alone, so times g, so 2x times natural log of x, plus now I'll leave x squared alone, so that will be x squared times the derivative of g times the derivative of natural log of x. Well, we said earlier that the derivative of natural log of x, that is 1 over x. So x squared times 1 over x. Here we can do a little bit of simplifying with this second term. We can say that this is 2x times natural log of x plus x. You could leave your answer like that. If you want to get some practice factoring, because of course we will be working with these derivatives a little bit more algebraically, you could factor out an x from these two terms, and that would look like x times 2 natural log of x plus 1 if you wanted to factor. 
Again, you're not required to factor by any means, but I do think whenever we have a chance to practice our factoring, it's probably a good idea to do so, because again, we will be working with these derivatives later on, um, uh, more frequently in chapter four, and the factored version of that derivative is going to be much easier to use than the unfactored version um, for the types of problems that we'll be doing. Let's look at just a couple more here. Next up, I've got y equals natural log of absolute value of tangent of x. Again, one thing I'll say, don't worry too much about these absolute value here. Um, it's not going to dramatically impact the derivative of natural log of x. Um, we can actually go back and look if you want to. You can actually look and see, hey, the derivative of natural log of absolute value of u, which is, this is what we're looking at here, it's just u prime over u. It's not changing the derivative of natural log of x uh, in a very dramatic way. So again, it's up to you how you would like to do it. If you would like to use the chain rule here, the chain rule I would pick my u to be tangent of x, so u would be tangent of x, u prime, the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared x. So we would rewrite this in terms of u, so y equals natural log absolute value of u. So when I take the derivative y prime, uh, derivative of natural log of u, that is one over u, times of course u prime for my chain rule, or more simply u prime over u. So my derivative then is, let's see, u prime, this is secant squared x divided by tangent x. I would probably just leave my answer like this. Um, I don't know that it would really simplify. Let me just check and see if this is gonna simplify. I don't think it's going to, um, but let's see. This is really one over cosine squared x divided by tangent is cosine of x divided by, oops, sine of x over cosine of x. Sine of x divided by cosine of x. So this is really equal to one over cosine squared x times cosine of x divided by sine of x. Oh, it actually will simplify because I can cancel a power of cosine. So this is really one over cosine of x times sine of x, or secant x cosecant x. So you could write your answer like that. I believe my math lab will take this solution. If you come across a problem that you're convinced is right, um, but, but they want you to simplify a little bit more, let me know. I can always take a look at it. Um, I, I don't care too much about factoring these or simplifying these at the end. Um, Honestly, I was mostly just curious about this one. So you can use the chain rule, or remember you can say, well, I know that the derivative, oops, and let's do this down here just to give ourselves a little bit more room. I know that the derivative of y equals natural log absolute value of u is simply just u prime over u. So if we're working with, oops, let me fix this up because this is a little bit confusing the way I wrote it. If y equals natural log absolute value of u, then, y prime is u prime over u. So if y equals natural log absolute value of tangent x, then y prime, u prime, derivative of tangent of x, that would be secant squared x, oops, secant squared x, divided by, that inside part stays the same, divided by tangent of x, and then of course we could simplify um, using the same methods that we did up here. I'm not gonna outline those again, but um, if we wanted to simplify it, we would end up with secant x cosecant x. So again, either one of these answers will do just fine. Um, if you ever have points taken off for, for not simplifying enough, let me know. I can always take a look at it. There are some things that I do want you to be able to simplify, so things like combining like terms, um, multiplying or distributing when necessary. Um, but as far as simplifying like trig functions like this, I'm not too worried about being able to do that. Let's look at one more example here in this video. Next up, I've got f of x equals natural log of x divided by x cubed minus two. And actually, whoops, 
I forgot to mention what derivative rule we used in this last example. This was, of course, we had a function inside of another function. This is an example of a chain rule. So the reason I mention that is because this one I think is a little bit easier to identify. I see this fraction and I think, okay, this looks like a quotient rule. So my quotient rule, f prime of x says low, so I'm gonna leave this part exactly the same. That'll be x cubed minus two, d high derivative of natural log of x. Well, derivative of natural log of x, that's just one over x minus high, so that's natural log of x, d low, derivative of my denominator, so the derivative of x cubed minus two, that would be times three x squared, square the bottom, x cubed minus two quantity squared, and away we go. So here, um, this one is a little bit tricky to simplify. I would, uh, here's what I would do. I see this one over x right here. Now, if I was to distribute that one over x here, I would cancel that x and that would be fine. But when I multiply one over x times this negative two, I'm gonna end up with another rational function. Es essentially, I'll end up with another fraction. Then I've got that fraction divided by this fraction. I've got fractions inside of fractions and that's just, it's just no good. Um, so here's what I think I'm gonna do. And if, if you don't see what I'm kind of trying to show, actually let me show what's going on here. If I distribute that, I'll have x squared minus, multiplying these two gives me two over x, minus, I'm gonna take this three x squared and just move it to the front, just so that there's no confusion about whether this three x squared is inside of my natural log function or not. So I'm gonna write that as minus three x squared natural log of x divided by x cubed minus two quantity squared. And I look at this and I see this fraction inside of this whole big fraction and that just kind of looks ugly. That there's not a great way, um, I, I just don't like the look of it. Maybe I'm picky, I don't know. But I look at that and I say, I would really like to get rid of this fraction I'm gonna look at, in particular, just the denominator of that numerator, and I'm lucky in that I only have one fraction in the numerator. I'm just gonna multiply both the numerator, kind of the big numerator, and the big denominator by the denominator I'm trying to get rid of, which in this case is x. So I'm gonna multiply everything by x. So when I distribute this through x times x squared, I should have x to the third power, x times negative two over x, we would lose that factor of x that we want, so that would just leave us with a minus two, that's what we wanted. And x times three x squared natural log of x, that's gonna be minus three x cubed natural log of x. Remember that this x right here is inside of your natural log function, so we're not going to multiply it, nothing we do is really gonna change that inside part of our function right there. Um, and then in our denominator, I'm just gonna essentially just leave it like that. Maybe I'll bump the x up to the front just cause we normally write monomials in the front. Um, but I would write that as x divided by x cubed minus two quantity squared. And I would say, all right, there's my derivative. So definitely get some practice in with the derivative of a natural log of x. It's one that I would say, yes, I think you do have to have it memorized. Um, but the, the, the formula for it, I don't think is too difficult to remember. Um, I would just get some practice in just so that we're comfortable with it because we will be using it quite a bit in this section.